I'm going to give you a presentation. The topic is how to attack and generate honeywords. This is a joint work of our collaboration with Peking University and Fujian Normal University. Passwords are ubiquitous in our daily digital lives, and the password-based authentication will remain the most widely used authentication method in the foreseeable future. Well, recently, millions of passwords were leaked, including some popular websites, for example, Yahoo, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Dropbox. What's worse, websites did not realize it until months or even years after the initial data breach. For example, the 68 million Dropbox breach occurred in 2012, yet users are asked to change their passwords four years later when the stolen data surfaced in the public in May 2016. A realistic question arises, how to make the data leakage less disastrous? There are three potential strategies. First, using machine-related functions. Second, threshold cryptography. Third, honeywords. Here, honeywords refer to decal passwords associated with each user account. We compare the three potential strategies from multiple dimensions, such as client impact, server impact, and scalability. From the perspective of security and usability, the first two strategies are secure, but have at least one serious flaw in usability. Overall, the strategy of Honeywell's works the best. The goal of Honeywell's is to make password leakage detectable. The basic idea is to put a batch of Honeywell's in the password file. However, if only Honeywell's are pleased, the real password will still be directly exposed, and it cannot defend against the online guessing attacks. To address this issue, we can put a key minus one Honeywell's in each account. Now the key question arises, how to generate Honeywell's that are indistinguishable from real passwords? We will tackle this problem in a principled approach. To start with, we give two examples of how to generate Honeywell's. The first method is to tweak the selected positions of the real passwords. The second method is to replace the segments with same time segments. For a given user, his real password is tiger81, and the rest are the Honeywell's generated by the two methods. Here, Honeywell's and the user's real passwords are collectively called sweet words. There are four instances involved in a Honeywell system, a user, a server, a honey checker, and an attacker. In this figure, the attacker has opened the sweet word file, offline guessed all the user's sweet words, and employed the server as an online querying oracle. If the attacker uses the Honeywell to log in, her online querying attempts will be detected by the honey checker. If the number of Honeywell login exceeds the single user threshold, the attacker will raise the alarm on the user's account. Moreover, the attacker will also cause the system-wide alarm to be raised if her Honeywell login attempts exceed the system-wide threshold. Here are four Honeywell generation methods of Juice and Revised. We have already introduced the first two, Tweak Tail and Model Use Syntax. For the third method, it's a hybrid method. It first uses the model in syntax method and then uses the tweak tail method. For the last method, its main idea is to generate Honeywell's character by character through a series of heuristic steps. In this work, we take a principled approach to Honeywell research. We first address the problem of how best to attack a given Honeywell method, and then design the corresponding Honeywell method based on leading password models. Furthermore, we have performed an intensive evaluation and obtained a number of insights. We assume that the attacker has somehow already knew all public information, such as leaked password lists, password policy, and the Honeywell method. In the worst case, all passwords in the hash file were recovered. At this time, the attacker will have each user's ID one real password, and k-1 Honeywell. According to whether or not you use personal information, we divide the attack signals into tolling attacks and targeted attacks. 
There are two main goals of an attacker. First, find the real password for a given user with the least number of guesses, x1. Second, find as many real passwords as possible while allowing x2 guesses overall. We have proved in our work, the two goals can be best achieved by using the same attacking strategy. For the metric, our work adopts two evaluation metrics to measure the advantages of a distinguishing attacker, or equally the goodness of a Hollywood method. The first one is the flatness graph. x, y on the graph means that the real password is guessed with a probability y in the first x attempts. This metric provides a view of the average resistance against a distinguishing attacker. The second metric is the success number graph. X, Y on the graph means that Y real passwords are successfully distinguished from the system before the X the Hollywood login attempt occurs. This metric measures the worst case performance of a method. Our experiments were built on 11 large-scale datasets, a total of 100 million real-world passwords. This table summarizes the datasets we used in this work. Specifically, our password dataset includes six from English sites and five from Chinese sites. Four of our password datasets are associated with various kinds of personal information. The method of generating Honeyword looks simple, but actually it's rather challenging. Here we explain why. The key point in traditional password guessing attacks is to guess users' passwords with as few guesses as possible. That is, sort the passwords according to the probability from high to low. One can use password probability models like PCFG and Markov. Well, for Hollywood guessing attacks, the key point is different. Our goal is to sort one user's key sweet words, or sort all users' sweet words. Here, sweet words equal key minus one Hollywood and one real password. Thus, we need to design new probability models. For attack strategies, the overall idea is to first sort the sweet words of each user, and then expand to sort the sweet words of all users. We introduce three probabilistic password models. They are least, PCFG, and Markov. For least, it's a simple yet useful model. The probability of a password is directly equal to its relative frequency in the data set. For PCFG and Markov, there are two leading models widely used in the field of password guessing. By replacing the personal information in the password with the type-based labels, the three models can be applied to the targeted attack signal. We now formulate what are basic attackers' optimal strategy by proposing theorem 1. Let PW sub i, g donate the event that U sub i selects SW sub i, g as her real password and uh, hw sub i, t donates the event that sw sub i, g is produced as a Honeyword for u sub i. We have this formula. This theorem indicates how to find the user's real password from her sweat word list. We will further simplify this formula. Based on theorem 1, we further propose theorem 2. Let f donate the event that the file f is produced as the password file for all users. And the other definitions complete with those in theorem 1. We have this formula. This theorem indicates that finding the most probable password can be reduced into first finding the most probable password within each sweet word list, and then ranking these candidate passwords. In this light, attackers' two goals can be essentially achieved by using the same attacking strategy. We now summarize the four properties that a Hollywood method may have. These properties can be used to classify existing Hollywood methods into two cases, and then we simplify the computation of the formula in theorem 1 for each case. The property 1 states that any sweet word can generate any other sweet word in a sweet word list. Here, the T is the set of sweet words obtainable from password X. The property 2 states that every sweet word can be generated by any candidate password with equal probability. 
Not that all Honeywell generation methods we discussed satisfy P1 and P2. The property sweet is that every sweet word generates all sweet words in its sweet word space with the same probability. All no password model based methods like tweaking tail satisfy this property. The property false is that Honeywell are unrelated with the real password. For Honeywell the generation methods that satisfy the properties P1 to P3, we can get this simplified formula. The variables on the right side of the equation can be obtained by various probability models. It suggests that for these Honeywell methods to achieve perfect flatness, all key sweet words in the list shall have an equal probability to be selected as user's real password. In other words, given the real password, a Honeywell generation method needs to produce k-1 Honeywells with equal probability to be this user's password. For methods that satisfy the properties P1, P2, and P4, we can simplify the formula in theorem 1 to this form. Similarly, the variables on the right side of the equation can be obtained mm -hmm. by various password models and the corresponding Honeywell generation methods. It points out how to best attack all our Honeywell generation methods. Here, Honeywell are independent of the user's real password. On this basis, we can get the basic design principles. Specifically, the basic design principle is that the probability of the Honeywell should be as consistent as possible with the real password. Thus, we get this equation. Considering that every model is not good enough, for example, list model cannot generate passwords not in the training set. For PCFG, it cannot generate structures that do not exist in the training set. For Markov, it seriously underestimates the probability of some long passwords. As a result, we can use a hybrid method to generate a honey words. According to different information available to the attacker, we can divide the attacker into four types. In reality, under different kind of attacker, the best attack will be different. To resist this different best attack, we need a different best Honeywell method. The table below is the overview of our four new Honeywell generation methods. Here, we will focus on the introduction of hybrid methods. Specifically, we first randomly select a model from list, PCFG, and Markov, and then generate a Honeywell based on the selected model. In this way, the probability of a password is underestimated only if it is underestimated by all three models. Although there are still some passwords with underestimated probability, the proportion has significantly decreased. Note that our method is highly adaptive, that is, Future improvements on password models like deep learning based models can be included easily. Now, we present the attack results. In tolling attack scenarios, with the guess number is 1, the probability of success is about 7%. When the attacker is allowed 10,000 guesses, the number of successful guesses is no more than 3,000, and the success rate is less than 7.2 percent. In targeted attack scenarios, we generate Honeywell using the corresponding target password guessing models. For the flatness, when the guess number is 1, the probability of success is less than 12.1 percent. For the success number, when an attacker is allowed 10,000 guesses, the number of successful guesses is no more than 6,300 and the success rate is less than 8.7%. While our methods can provide desirable security against computer-automated attackers, whether the conclusion still holds under semantic-aware humans is unknown. Thus, we recruit 11 graduate students who are taking a network security seminar to participate in our evaluation. Our methods achieve a most perfect flatness and the no personal information aware attackers. Even when attackers are personal information aware, our corresponding methods still achieve 0.09 flatness.
In future work, some issues still remain to be addressed. For example, how to perform the optimal combination of each model. That is, how to choose alpha, beta, and gamma. Further, how to design better password probability models. That's all. Thank you for your listening. We have one of the authors, uh, Yuan Kai, here with us. Can find oh, yes. Yeah. Any questions? Okay, I'll start with uh, one. Um, so have you thought about using generative adversarial network to produce honey words? Or, mm -hmm. um, yeah. do, do you think it's a a good idea and uh, easy to apply, or uh, is there any subtlety or difficulty that you foresee? Uh, yeah, so deep learning is indeed a good a good idea to generate honeywells. But actually, when when we are using deep learning based models, uh, there are some things we should to notice. For example, uh, we should uh, first judge that uh, the deep learning method is real password related or real pass unrelated unrelated. Uh, this thing, this thing is very important. If you if we use a deep learning based model, uh, uh, the property uh, the pro the property is this model has is to use the use the specific user's real password to generate his uh, uh, honey words. Then I think uh, this way is not a good idea uh, because if we use a method that is related to the user's real password. There are some uh, side, no uh, side channel information will be leaked. For example, the the character the the character information, the loss information of our password. So I think using deep learning in the future work, uh, it must be or it should it should be or it would would be better if the this method is real password unrelated. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Hey. So my question is about. Passwords are often shared across different websites. So how, does your model consider those as well? Like an attacker gets the password list and tries different passwords at different websites. Uh, could you please see your question again? So oftentimes the passwords will be shared across different websites. Let's say a user has the same passwords for Google and also Facebook. And you get the password list from one of the servers, and then you try the passwords across like different passwords in different websites to get to guess uh, the correct yes. password. Okay, I got it. Uh, you mean the uh, people are uh, tend to reuse their password according to according to different websites? Uh, this is a good is it's a good question. Uh, we have already considered it, but uh, in our paper, our main focus is on the Honeywell generation method itself. For this kind of attack. Uh, it can use some crypto uh, crypto method. For example, uh, there are some people who use uh, design a new protocol to to protect this uh, protect uh, protect users from using the same password according to different websites. Okay, thanks. I have a basic clarification question. So, how does a server know whether a password is a honey password or a actual password? Is this information stored in the server itself? And what if, if this information is also leaked along with the password list? Uh, you mean uh, the Honeywell and the real password were leaked uh, all together? Or? And along with, like, how does the server know whether a password is a good uh, actual password or a honey password? Uh, I don't get your question. Sorry. So during authentication, during regular authentication, the server would have to know what's the real password and which are the honey words, right? And is this information stored somewhere and would it be stolen? Oh, it? okay. Oh, oh, I got it. I got it. Uh, the real, uh, uh, there are some entity called named uh, Honey Checker. Uh, the, uh, the server will check uh, if the uh, if the input inputted uh, password uh, by users uh, is real password or honey word, and uh, this is uh, and uh, this process proce this process happens in a single in a separated place, uh, 
uh, its name is usually called phone checker, and it's a separated uh, separated entity. Awesome, thanks. Okay. Let's uh, thank all our speakers again.